Alright, hello and welcome to my first Legend of Zelda podcast. And uh, basically what I want this series to be is uh, like a short little talk show every now and then about different uh, topics that are being discussed in the Zelda community. And uh, today I wanted to focus on the past, present, and future of the game design and all the Zelda games. Uh, sitting in front of me I have some of the more significant games which uh, varied with their game design, which whether it be art styles, gameplay mechanics, different items that you could use, um, graphics of course, and I wanted to talk about how it was back when Zelda first started, how we have it now, and how we expect it to unfold in the future. So uh, basically all the information we have right now of the future is that they are releasing a uh, Wind Waker HD for the Wii U. I actually have Wind Waker in front of me right now. Wind Waker is one of my favorite games um, in the Zelda franchise, that is. And uh, I like it a lot because of the graphics. And a lot of people didn't like the graphical style, being the uh, shell shaded or cell shaded cartoony style kind of game. I actually like that a lot. And it looks really good in HD as far as the screenshots I've seen goes. So uh, Wind Waker was definitely a pivotal moment for the Zelda franchise. And uh, we also, we know that it has been confirmed that they are working on a brand new original Zelda title. That's basically all we know about it. There's no information. That one probably won't release until a while. So, uh, yeah, let's just get started uh, with the original Legend of Zelda. Now, this game basically defined the NES along with Super Mario Brothers. Um, I love this game a lot. And uh, it really defines the Zelda series. I hold it near and dear to my heart. And it remains the blueprint for every Zelda game. Now this game, you know, had the most basic of graphics, most basic of items. Uh, the gameplay was perfect. Uh, the world was pretty small compared to what we have now. And uh, yeah, it's it really is all around perfect. And the cartridge came in gold, so that's obviously a plus. And then we have the only direct sequel in the Zelda franchise, which is Zelda 2, The Adventure Link, which also came in gold, by the way. And uh, that game was a heck of a lot different. A lot of people consider um, Link's Awakening, or Link to the Past, to be the true successor to the first game, since The Adventure Link was so different. Um, for some reason, it is really a lot different than the original game. It definitely feels a lot more like an RPG than the original. Uh, the original game was all overhead, uh, like you experienced the entire game from a bird's eye view. But and uh, the original Zelda was more of an action adventure game, but Zelda 2 focused on the RPG genre. You had things like leveling up, you had uh, items that are kind of signature to the RPG genre. And uh, in Zelda 2, I mentioned in the original Legend of Zelda, you witnessed the entire game from a bird's eye view. In Zelda 2, uh, you witness it both from a bird's eye view when you're in the overworld and when you enter towns and dungeons and whatnot, you, uh, you witness it from a side-scrolling view, which is kind of interesting. I personally didn't like it very much, but it actually worked pretty well uh, for the game itself. I'm not really a big fan of Zelda becoming an RPG. Uh, I think if you're an RPG fan, you're better off playing something like Final Fantasy. And Zelda really works best when it's focused as an uh, action-adventure game as opposed to an RPG. Uh, next, I'm not really going to talk about uh, Link's Awakening because that game really wasn't that significant. It was very similar to the original and very similar to Link to the Past, which I'm going to talk about next, which is very similar to the original. Again, it, you have the whole game for a bird's eye view. All the game mechanics are back. Basically, it's Zelda 1 in 16-bit with a better story. <laughs> um, the whole story is a lot better. It's a lot of fun. Uh, for the record, Link to the Past is my favorite Zelda, um, which I think is pretty original. Um, a lot of like Everyone says Ocarina of Time is their favorite Zelda, mainly because they haven't played any of the other Zeldas. I mean, it's fine if you've played them all and you like Ocarina of Time. I respect that completely, but I'd say about... 75% of the time, people say Ocarina of Time is their favorite because they haven't played any of the others. But uh, yeah, I, I, Link to the Past is my favorite. I like it for a lot of reasons. Uh, I really enjoyed the light and dark world kind of idea. And uh, it was definitely pivotal for Legend of Zelda series. 
Um, Legend of Zelda was popular at the time, but Link to the Past really pushed it into the mainstream audience more. Uh, next, here I have Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, which is my second favorite. Uh, this game was a lot different as far as uh, graphics go. This was in 64 bits. That means it was in 3D. Uh, you witness the whole game either in cutscenes or from a third person view behind Link. Uh, the story in this game is absolutely phenomenal. It's, it's practically unbeatable. Uh, it does step a little bit farther away from the original Zelda. Uh, it has it focuses a lot more on different races, like the Gorons, the Zoras, the um, the Hylians, the uh, forest people. Uh, the game is really interesting as far as that goes, but the uh, graphical style or the art style, I should say, um, it's a little different than what I personally like. I like the original art style where it's just you know the little boy Link going out to save the world. You know what I mean. Uh, that w withheld the same art style within Zelda 2 and A Link to the Past, which I really like that art style. And uh, Ocarina of Time was the first game to feature an adult Link, so the art style obviously had to change for that, which was all right. I I wasn't a huge fan, but it, it was pretty cool though. Still, next I have a very underrated game, which is Legend of Zelda: Majora's Mask. I feel like the biggest reason why this game was uh, so underrated is that it was uh, overshadowed a lot by uh, Ocarina of Time's mainstream success. Like, everyone played Ocarina of Time when it came out. And um, Majora's Mask only came out two years later, I think. Uh, Ocarina of Time being 98 and Majora's Mask being 2000. Uh, this game is basically the same as Ocarina of Time with a different story. Actually, a completely different story. And a lot different uh, gameplay mechanics. Obviously, this game focuses more on the uh, the masks. The mask gives you special powers in Majora's Mask, whereas in Ocarina of Time, they don't really do anything. But uh, yeah, basically, Majora's Mask, you're trying to save a place called Termina from the moon falling. Uh, yeah, it, it sounds kind of crazy, but it's pretty cool. It base it's based on time travel. Uh, you only have three days to save the world, and you have to time travel between the three days in order to do it. And uh, again, I have Wind Waker here, which uh, had a very different art style. Now, Majora's Mask had the same art style as Ocarina of Time, because they were run on basically the same engine. But uh, actually, the exact same engine. But uh, the Wind Waker, on the other hand, was a totally different art style because it uses the shell shaded graphics. And uh, it has like a huge cartoon kind of aspect to it. It's really cool. I like it. It looks really good for the GameCube. And I can't wait to see it in crystal clear HD on the Wii U. It should be very interesting. Uh, again, the Wind Waker is kind of like a love-hate kind of game. You either really like it or you really don't. I, for one, really like it a lot because of the art style. And the story is different and the gameplay mechanics are a little different. And then here's where I stopped liking Zelda. Um, Twilight Princess. Now I really don't have anything against Twilight Princess as a game itself, but I do have a lot against it as a Zelda game. It strays a lot away from the roots of Legend of Zelda. It seems the farther we get down the path, the, um, the farther we get away from the original Legend of Zelda on the NES as far as gameplay mechanics go. And the art style, that's probably the biggest uh, minus for me personally is the art style. Like I said, I think the original art style is by far the best. And the realistic art style of Twilight Princess really just doesn't look good at all for me. And it doesn't work for the Zelda series in any way, in my opinion. And uh, like, uh, I mean, like I said, it doesn't hold true to any of the original Zelda gameplay mechanics or the art style obviously which you know that's one of the reasons why I like The Legend of Zelda so much is the art style, the gameplay mechanics, the puzzle solving all that kind of stuff. Twilight Princess basically scraps all that and replaces it. I think it really would have been better as a separate game not part of any franchise than being in the Zelda franchise. It's probably my least favorite 
uh, besides the CDI games, which I really don't count. If you don't know what that is, good for you. I'm ashamed to even know what they are, but um, yeah, it's, that's kind of where I stop really liking Zelda. And uh, I don't like, like I said, the art style is probably the biggest reason. And the wolf, I mean, come on. Why the heck does Link turn into a wolf in a Zelda game? That is just the stupidest idea I have ever heard in my entire life. How about, you know, we have Link and uh, we have to disable him somehow, so let's turn him into a wolf and have him run around. Are you kidding me? They had to have been drunk or high or something when they came up with that. That is just the stupidest thing ever. <laughs> but, um, yeah, next, Twilight Princess, which I like a heck of a lot more than... Or, no, not Twilight Princess, uh, excuse me. Skyward Sword, which I like a lot more than Twilight Princess. Art style is kind of reminiscent of the original 2 on the NES and uh, Link to the Past on the Super Nintendo. Kind of going back to its roots as far as gameplay again. And uh, yeah, that game's okay. I, I like it. I like the story too. How you know Hyrule wasn't built at the time of that game, which was really cool. And uh, yeah, it. I like how... You know, it was like the most recent game, and they threw it right at the beginning of the timeline. I, I thought that was pretty cool. Rather than putting it all the way at the end, putting a a total precursor to the entire series right there, I uh, I thought I thought that was pretty cool. And it looks really nice, like the the kind of pencil sketched art style of the game. It looks really nice. It's, it's like the Wind Waker. Like the if you actually look at the graphical power. It's not that good, but they do it in such a way that it just looks magnificent and beautiful. I really like it. And uh, now it's time to talk about the future of the Legend of Zelda series. You know, where we're going to go. Um, like I said, there's a Wind Waker HD. I'm not too worried. It's like, I mean, like I said, it's, it's literally the Wind Waker in high definition. So, whatever, that'll come and go. But, um... What I'm really worried about is the next Zelda game that's coming out. It's been confirmed. They are, it is in the process of being developed. And I'm really excited. So uh, as far as art style, unfortunately, I highly doubt they're actually going to go back to the original art style. They're probably going to keep with the, uh, the Twilight Princess for whatever reason. Uh, I feel like Twilight Princess is another one of those games, like I said, Ocarina of Time. They'll say it's their favorite because they haven't played any of the other ones, you know. So uh, I think that game was way overrated, and Majora's Mask was way underrated. But uh, yeah, Twilight Princess, not, I wasn't talking about Ocarina of Time being overrated. I, I meant Twilight Princess being overrated, obviously. But uh, Yeah, so I really don't think they're going to go back to the art style that I like. I think they're going to keep the same art style, and I don't have too much faith in them bring back any of the game mechanics again either. I doubt they'll be able to do that because some of the newer games are getting a lot better, you know, reviews and that's that's what's modern. Like they've learned that that works best when they're selling a game, so they're not going to go back to something that they did 30 years ago. It's just not going to work and they're not going to, you know, make as much money off of that. People aren't going to like it as much. But uh yeah, if I could like design the next Zelda game by myself and choose all the mechanics, I would probably make a direct sequel to A Link to the Past. Because I think A Link to the Past is the prime example, the prime specimen of a uh, Zelda game. It has all the mechanics that are perfect for the genre. It has the perfect graphics. I think 16-bit is the best graphical way to go. I love 16-bit on anything. And uh, the story kind of left open-ended at the end, if you know what I mean. Um, I feel like there was a lot more character development in A Link to the Past than there was in, for example, Ocarina of Time, where there were actually more characters. Like I said, Ocarina of Time focuses a lot on the races, so you, you have to meet a lot of characters in Ocarina of Time. But in Link to the Past, there's more direct character development between, um, you know, Link's uncle and... Ganondorf and Aghanim and Zelda especially, so you feel more of a connection, and uh, I would like to see that connection brought back again, you know. I, I like to have direct character development as opposed to what we have now where, you know, there's kind of 
less character development, but more characters to develop, if you know what I mean. Quantity over quality. Uh, I definitely prefer the way Link to the Past executed that. And, uh, yeah, like I said, I really don't have too much faith in the next Zelda title, although I probably will play it. I mean, it is a Zelda game. I'm not saying it's going to be bad. I'm just saying it's probably not going to be a great Zelda game. So, yeah, that's basically my opinion on all of this. Uh, I know this probably wasn't the best podcast you've probably ever heard. I'm feeling a little sick right now. That's the excuse I have for my voice. And uh, next time, I don't know what I'm really going to talk about. Uh, I do want to talk about the timeline, though. That's probably what, what the next podcast is going to be about. The official timeline from Hyrule Astoria, which was just released here in the United States. So I'll probably buy that book and then review the timeline and uh, explain what I think about that, what my opinions on that are. So again, uh, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for listening. Have a nice day. Goodbye.